Hey, how you guys doing? My name is Mike Malpedi. I am a poet and English major from Bridgewater State University. Uh, I'm what you would probably call a spoken word artist or a slam poet. I, most of what everything I write is to be performed. I perform a lot with a group called Seed of the Poetry that we started up on campus. And what I want to do is, you know, I post a lot on Tumblr, my work, and my work can be, be very long and drawn out. And I think, you know, you can't really get the full effect of what a spoken word poem is until you actually hear it. You can't really get as much of the emotion from reading it off the page because there's just really a huge difference between just the written word and the spoken word. And so what I want to do for people that, you know, are following me on Tumblr, my blog, and I want to start posting on YouTube, which I'm doing right now. So I just want you guys to see what I do, check it out, critique me, my fellow poets, let me know what you think, how you feel. And I'm going to try to do, you know, at least one of these a week. Uh, for this week, I'll probably do two that I, I have prepared and written. I'm going to start off first, though, with the first poem I actually ever did back in high school, my sophomore year for my poetry slam back in here in Marshfield. And it's called The Story of Jack Warner. So uh, people really seem to enjoy this still even today. So I hope you guys like it too. And without further ado, here we go. Now this story about to be told is about my friend, Jack Warner. A boy who couldn't look in the mirror, that old funhouse mirror, where all he saw was some beastly abomination, a demented monstrosity, an unholy being that no one could ever love or desire, a horrid clown performing in a circus of agony that he called his life. A boy who felt that he was a loner because everyone around him had found love, been loved, felt love's gracious touch, but not Jack. Jack had yet to feel its gentle hand, and he wanted it, needed it, but just didn't believe he could ever have it. You see, he had told the girl he loved her. Her name was Sally. She was Jack's goddess whom he worshipped, his true vision of perfection. Aphrodite's true sister he would have fought for, killed for, died for. But when Jack spoke his words of passion romance, she looked at Jack like he was crazy. Didn't even utter a word to him, leaving him in the dust. So every day Jack's pain grew worse, Jack's heart, Jack's mind, even his very soul. All maimed, he felt like crying, but tears just never came to his face. His emotions broken, scattered across the floor like a puzzle, one that just was never really meant to be put together. So one day Jack could no longer stand it. He ran home from school, rushed to his room and closed the door, his mind keeping in darkness slowly surrounding his trembling body. He looked outside his window, saw a raven and a dove perched outside his window, and he saw he heard them speak, heard them debating, listened to the raven's chuckle. Finally, I've waited years for this. Come on, Jack, let the darkness take you. It'll consume your empty heart. Don't hesitate, don't resist, to slip into that dark abyss. The dove retorted quickly. Oh, come on, Jack, please. You're better than this. Just think about your dreams. Think about that beautiful girl you could have, future wife, that loving family, and the wonderful cliched house on the beach where the sun is always there, never fading, or on that crystal clear lake, that lake that never darkens but shines more bright and more beautiful every day. Don't give up on your dreams. Please make them real, Jack. Now Jack had crossed over to insanity, not knowing what to do, who to believe, what to believe. He was so blinded by the pain, the confusion, wanting these hellish apparitions to leave his eyes, his mind, but they persisted, and the raven chimed in once more. Come on, Jack, I don't have all day. Come on, Jack, let's be realistic. Your only two friends are agony and pain. They are best friends who live with you in your sad little world where you are a ghost. Where the heavens crack as they have to see your face. Where every creature waits for your demise where love is Brutus' sword where passion is the best corrupted mind where romance is a mere mirage that kills the weak hearted so give your soul to your eternal nightmare let the sleepless night have you cause your mind and your heart are slowly fading they will personal reaper grab its hand and let it take you let it lead you into that sleepless night don't hesitate don't resist just slip into that dark abyss the dove came in once more Please, Jack, come on. You know you're better than this. You got the heart of a lion. Just open its cage. Let it fight this demon. It can be your savior if you let it free. And don't give up on love, Jack. It's not corrupted. It's not a fool's death. Love is as truthful and pure as God himself. Passion is the word he speaks. Romance is the gift he has given to us. Don't let that gift be taken. And your angel of desire, your eloquent goddess, she's out there. You gotta find her, Jack. You gotta search for her. But Jack can't hear the dove's plea. To hypnotize by the darkness in that raven's eyes, hell's personal messenger as he slowly lets that darkness fill his fragile body, and it begins to consume every inch of his soul. He lets out an ear-shattering scream. Now Sally's walking down the street, 
coming to Jack's home, coming to confess her feelings, her true feelings that she just couldn't express before, because you see, love had never touched her either, and she had never felt love's gracious hand, and Jack's words of passion and romance were just like a grenade that exploded in Sally's face, and she couldn't comprehend it first, but she knew she couldn't let Jack go, she knew she couldn't let his love fade away, but she was walking up, coming to Jack's home, looked up, saw Jack, saw him dashing about and howling in despair, and she screamed and ran for his house, and the rain was laughing, and the dog was crying, and Jack was slowly feeding into the emptiness she burst through the door and she cried jack no please jack i love you jack with all my heart and my soul jack and now jack is crying for the first time not because of pain or anguish but because love had touched him love had finally touched his unloved existence and he held sally close as he watched that raven fly back to hades and the dove smiling as it flew to the heavens and jack kissed sally's pale and fragile lips and the skies parted like the Red Sea, and the two slowly began to rise higher and higher into that elk and blue sky, into the golden light of our fair sun. Their lips were locked in an endless kiss, never to be separated, never to be ended. And so ends the story of Jack Warner, the strong-hearted and loved Jack Warner. Thank you guys very much. I hope you enjoyed, and I uh, hope you come back to view some more stuff. You can look me up right now, actually, on the uh, poetry.tumblr.com, and also on my new YouTube channel. So please look for me, Facebook me, follow me on Tumblr. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear some of your stuff as well. And thank you guys so much.